The title of this video I think pretty accurately sums up people's sentiments when it comes to the level alone in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Some will love it, it's certainly dripping with atmosphere, it has some great dialogue, and if you're a sucker for a Call of Duty gimmick mission like I am, it will likely be right up your street. On the other hand, some will hate it. While its early stages I think are very good, Alone is undeniably frustrating during its second half, which for many will leave quite the sour taste. So, I think we should maybe have a bit of a chat about it. Following a successful mission to prevent a missile from striking New Orleans, Task Force 141 members Soap and Ghost travel back to base alongside Philip Graves, the CEO of a PMC named Shadow Company, to celebrate a job well done. That is, until Graves betrays them. What the fuck? Escaping by the skin of his teeth, Soap finds himself alone on the streets of fictional Mexican city Las Almas, unsure of his squadmate's fate, although fortunately, it quickly becomes apparent that there's a reason his teammate is nicknamed Ghost. You're injured. Zero, men court in this area. Yeah. So, Ghost, Hassan's here. I'm good. Let's find out how good you are. Keep your blood in, you'll need every drop. Thanks for the tip. You're with me. From here, you're left to explore the Rain Slick City as you hunt for a route to the church where Ghost is located, and these early parts of Alone really are dripping with atmosphere. Graves and his soldiers commit unspeakable acts in the distance as they attempt to track down terrorist Hassan Ziani, and Las Almas's narrow streets gives everything a very claustrophobic feel. You soon begin to feel like a rat trapped in a very deadly maze. It's not all bad news, however. It turns out you are also a very clever rat, the MacGyver of rodents, if you will, and after scavenging some rope and a fan blade, you're able to open up a new path which takes you past your nearby enemies. By this point, you'll have probably already realised that this is not your average Call of Duty mission. Rather than filling bad guys full of lead at a relentless pace like you're so often asked to, Alone is a more down-tempo affair, during which crafting and correctly utilising various homemade implements is key to success. Given that this is a new concept for the series, introducing this mechanic and the stealth gameplay which accompanies it in a manner which can be easily understood by anyone was vital. In my view, the gold standard for this is Titanfall 2 level effect and cause. It features a time travel mechanic only present for a single mission, and developer Respawn Entertainment does an incredible job of acclimatising you to your newfound superpower. First, you're privy to a few very brief flashes between past and present within a safe environment, designed to clearly illustrate exactly what is happening. Then, you're given a quick opportunity or two to interact with the past, to demonstrate that you are able to do more than simply look around. And finally, you're given full control, and can switch between the two at will, at which point Respawn begins to gradually increase the complexity of the challenges you're faced with, whether that be fighting large groups of enemies across both past and present, or hopping between them while jumping around Around to safely navigate the environment. The time travel mechanic is explained clearly through visuals and gameplay across three distinct phases, so that by the time you're let loose with it, you'll have naturally come to understand what it entails without Respawn having to resort to endless pop-up boxes crammed with text, tutorial sections, or similar. It is brilliant. Living up to that particular slice of fried gold is a tough prospect, and of course there's less opportunity to explain things visually given Alone's context and its far more grounded setting, but Infinity Ward gets its spot on. Initially, all you have to do is search a safe area to find the parts needed to craft your first item, which you use on a nearby door. You're then free to search a house, a larger area, where you can hunt for more items, and will eventually get your hands on the flashlight. Found a headlamp. Not too far from his previous order. Good. Careful with it. Can light your way but attract attention. Next up, bottles are brought into play in an even bigger area, with guards needing to be distracted so you can proceed safely, and your capabilities soon begin to increase as you find new items allowing you to craft mines and smoke bombs. You might even manage to get your hands on a gun as well. Took his gun. Good work. Moving up in the world, Johnny. Choose your shots and targets wisely, Johnny. Guns make noise. My kingdom for a suppressor. Be smart with what you got. That's the trick. 
After which, there's one final skill check, a trio of enemies you'll have to make it past in order to succeed, which is followed not long after by the most open section of them all, which I'll come back to very shortly. Infinity Ward structures Alone's first half similarly to the Titanfall 2 example, and it works like a charm. First, you get used to the basics in a safe space, then you're given a little more room to experiment, and last but not least, you're tasked with using your initiative to navigate a set of more complicated and more dangerous areas. Those examples of Ghost providing guidance I shared just now I also wanted to include as I think the dialogue is handled exceptionally well throughout Alone. If Effect and Cause's visual examples of how the time travel mechanic works are the secret source that made Respawn's tutorialising work so well in a way which made sense in World, then Ghost's handy hints and tips shared over the radio are the equivalent in Modern Warfare 2. They're not as extravagant as flashes between past and present, I will concede that, but they strike a perfect balance between between helping you and not making what you're meant to do overly obvious. You're given advice which complements the increasing mechanical complexity, but you're never told explicitly what you need to do. Through both gameplay and dialogue, you're slowly bedded into how the level works, but are very much left to your own devices when it comes to deciding what actions to take, which means immersion is never broken during these early stages. This functional dialogue is also supplemented by some light-hearted but equally fantastic exchanges too. This passionate donor here. Speak English. It's raining fucking hard. Then say so. I did. Rain's good, it'll cover your tracks. Covers theirs too. Let's worry about you, Johnny. Oh shit. Alone's atmosphere is very sombre to say the least, and Infinity War does also sensibly take an appropriate amount of time to properly introduce everything, which could have led to the mission becoming a little too slow, dark and dreary. Some of you might have preferred that to be the case, but for me, the banter between Soap and Ghost is the little spoonful of sugar needed to help the moody, stealth-based medicine go down. Top marks to whoever did the writing for this mission, they did a superb job throughout. Speaking of dark and dreary, something I didn't expect from Alone was the surprising amount of horror found within it. The experience as a whole absolutely has shades of The Last of Us about it, as you scavenge items to make Molotov cocktails and the like, and I do wonder whether the two safes which can be unlocked using codes hidden in the environment itself are a little nod to Naughty Dog's classic as well. There are also some genuine scares too. There's a dog near the start which gave me a bit of a fright. These mannequins made me jump out of my skin and the constant knocking sound followed by this poor fella bursting onto the scene definitely got me. We generally don't get a lot of horror in the Call of Duty series outside of the numerous zombie modes, but it's without doubt something I'd be keen to experience more of in the future. There's just enough time to gather some extra items and for a little more banter between Soap and Ghost. You're gonna owe me for this. Why? We're fixing each other's problems. What's my problem? The mask. Take it off. Show my face. Yes, sir. Negative. Are you ugly? Quite the opposite. I doubt that. Before Alone really begins to open up. Everything up to this point is first-class work by Infinity Ward. It can take a good 20 minutes or so to get here, which for some will be a little on the long side, but I don't think that's an issue. There are several levels in Modern Warfare 2 which outstay their welcome, whether that be violence and timing which simply goes on for too long, or Recon by Fire which repeats itself for no good reason, but alone does not join them in that category. It's a long mission, yes, but the way it builds atmosphere and uses its structure to tutorialise its new mechanics means it's more than worth it. The problem is that it's when you're given the most freedom you've had so far in the level that things quickly begin to fall apart. Your goal is to reach some tunnels which will bring you closer to the church, but getting to them is incredibly frustrating. There are two major issues with this area, the enemy AI and the checkpointing system. Good enemy AI in a stealth game, or indeed a stealth level, needs to be, to at least some degree, predictable. If you are left completely unable to work out what a guard might do or where they may head next, then staying hidden, especially in crowded areas, becomes an almost impossible task. This usually means that some realism is sacrificed at the altar of gameplay. In most stealth games you can anticipate enemy patrol routes, and even if you're caught, guards will eventually return to their posts after an alert phase and conveniently forget you ever existed, for example, but that's no bad thing. If they were too clever, if they searched every nook and cranny or never let up in their pursuit of you, I'd wager most would soon get pretty frustrated. The issue with the loans baddies is that even after multiple playthroughs, I could never really predict what they were going to do. 
Sometimes I'd take someone down with no issue and be able to escape without anyone getting suspicious, while on other occasions I'd do similar and be immediately swarmed by an endless stream of guards. You can hear enemies communicating over their radios to help add a touch of realism, but what actually happens can be quite inconsistent. It's also very easy to get spotted, and once they're in an alert phase, escaping them or finding areas safe from their patrols can be an absolute nightmare, as their movements always seem to be very erratic. Often, it feels as if every enemy in the entire area is aware of exactly where you are as soon as you're caught. That might be realistic, but it's not fun. That inconsistency is also present in other places too, such as hiding spots. Every stealth game ever has taught me that hiding under a vehicle will probably keep me safe, for example, but in Alone, that's definitely not the case either. Sometimes it did, but a lot of the time it didn't, and that soon became very, very annoying. That being said, it is possible to get to the end of the level without ever alerting anyone. Throwing knives along with the silenced pistol and crossbow which can be found in safes are your best friends when attempting this, but with the AI being as ruthless as it is across all difficulty levels, I'd guess most will struggle to do it. The other major problem with the level's second half is its checkpoints. They are far too frequent, and it's very easy to become trapped in a near-unwinnable situation. During one of my playthroughs, I was stuck in this area with two guards approaching, one through each of the doorways I was sandwiched between. No issue, you might think. I could have simply loaded my last checkpoint and tried not to get into a situation like it again. Except Modern Warfare 2 had already decided to checkpoint me right there and then. So, there I was, stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to figure out how to best escape the situation. I did manage to do so after many retries using a smoke bomb, but it took a good number of attempts as I still ended up getting spotted 90% of the time. I think Infinity Ward made the checkpoints so frequent to try and help you, but they just as often do exactly the opposite. Honestly, I'm surprised they were left as they are for the final release, as they're not implemented very well at all. Whether you breeze through the area like some kind of Scottish ninja or bumble your way through it with all the subtlety of a bull in a china shop, hopefully you will at some point emerge through it and the equally irritating tunnel which follows unscathed. You're not quite done yet, however. Fuck! What the oh. Get down! Oh. shadow stations. Got one near the church. Hell, hell. Holy hell. Of course, is that you? Who else? Now go. Infinity Ward does a terrible job of guiding you through this next section. For some, including myself during my first playthrough, taking on the approaching guards seemed like the next obvious step, but they're all the terrible armoured enemies I'm not convinced anyone is a fan of, which meant doing so was pretty much a death sentence. What you're actually meant to do is head to the alley to the right and work your way through the buildings towards the church's steps. This part I was able to get through without being discovered fairly consistently, but what you need to do is not at all well signposted, and I'd imagine quite a few people may have had a bit of a rough time trying to get through this final part of the mission. Reaching the church, you'll finally be reunited with Ghost. And there's one last thing here which perhaps annoyed me more than any other. Remember moments ago when I said that the enemies here were all wearing armour? Well, now that you have to fight your way to a vehicle to escape, none of them are. I may perhaps be a touch too angry about this, but for me, it feels like the final glaring inconsistency in a second half riddled with inconsistencies. Reaching a vehicle, Soap saves Ghost from certain death before Alone reaches its conclusion. You made it. We made it, LT. Go fast. That's one way of doing it. Get back! Thanks. Drive. Come for us. It's Alone's fantastic first half and brutally inconsistent second half which lead me to describe it as Modern Warfare 2's best worst level. During its early stages, Infinity Ward does a fantastic job of combining subtle tutorialization with tension building to create a Call of Duty experience quite unlike any other, and I wholeheartedly believe it to be one of the best parts of the game's campaign. Unfortunately, it all falls apart once you're given more freedom during its latter sections. It is possible to get through the 
the entirety of alone without ever being discovered, but I'd wager most will find getting through it at all to be an extremely annoying affair due to the inconsistencies evident in the AI and checkpointing system. And that word, inconsistent, is the one I'd use to describe alone as a whole. Towards its start, it does so much well and is an immensely engaging experience, but unfortunately, I don't think it ever manages to quite deliver on its early promise. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and soldiers wearing weird skull masks. If you think I managed to craft a decent video, do consider liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts on Alone, and hopefully we'll meet again soon.